Hey everyone, so today I want to go over the engine oil analysis of a brand new virgin sample of Costco Kirkland engine oil. Now, I've been doing these 10,000 mile oil change analysis for a while now, and one very common question I get is, what does the oil look like when it's brand new? Because the oil is coming back in pretty good shape after 10,000 miles, but a lot of people are curious, well, what does it look like when it's brand new out of the bottle? So I just got those results back from Blackstone Labs, and the numbers showed up surprisingly good compared to what they look like after 10,000 miles. Now we're going to superimpose my most recent test at 170,000 miles to show how much deterioration the oil actually had. And at the end of the video, I want to discuss a, another test that I'm currently have underway that's going to be even more accurate and show an even closer examination of the deterioration of this oil as it ages. So uh, starting from the top, now you can ignore the unit slash location averages in the middle. Now that's going to be basically the same as the virgin sample on the left. So you have brand new Costco oil on the left and the same oil with 10,000 miles on it on the right. So the only wear metal that showed up in the oil after when it was brand new was aluminum. You had one part per million of aluminum show up in the oil that was brand new. And then after 10,000 miles, it showed four parts per million. So that's really good. And then on the right, you can see the other uh, parts per million of the wear metals that showed up after 10,000 miles. Uh, now, the additives package. The additives package came back really, really good, surprisingly good. That's molybdenum, boron, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and zinc. And you can look at those numbers from left to right and see the deterioration was very small. I mean, most of these were like 10%, 15%, give or take, they all deteriorated very little. The only one that deteriorated significantly was the boron. That deteriorated about 75%, but everything else was very, very little. The molybdenum, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and zinc, the deterioration numbers were very, very small. The oil held up fantastic after 10,000 miles. And uh, the contaminants, Silicon and sodium, it had a little bit in there for on the new oil sample on the left, and you can see those numbers increased a little bit on the right. Possible test contamination, possibly there was a little bit of those contaminants in the oil when it was brand new. I don't know where it really came from, but it showed a little bit, but the numbers really didn't go up much. So uh, it did very, very well, this oil. And moving down to the properties of the oil. Now in the middle, in the gray, you can see these should be values and it held up really good. So you can see for the two top tests, the viscosity, the SUS test on top, you can see it's supposed to be between 46 and 56. We started off at 52.4 and it only dropped to 50.2. So well within the safe margin of error. And you can see the CST viscosity test supposed to be between 6 and 9.4. We started off at 799 and it only dropped to 734. So the viscosity barely dropped. That The viscosity drop is most likely from fuel dilution, which is very common. All oils are going to get fuel dilution as they age. That is completely normal. Flashpoint started off at 445 and dropped to 395. Again, likely from fuel dilution from the fuel contamination. Now you see in the middle, it says it's supposed to be 410. That's because the new oil is supposed to be as high as 410 and on the actual test that I got back at 170,000 miles they said it needs to be 385 at 10,000 miles so uh, the flashpoint held up very well as well and then there, in the new oil there was no fuel antifreeze water or insolubles because it's new uh, you can see on the right the deterioration was very low the fuel dilution was only half a percent and the insolubles were 0.4 everything else was zero no antifreeze no water in it because i do highway driving so the head gasket's doing good uh, i don't get water in the oil i do a lot of highway driving so a lot of run hours uh, on the oil at uh, full temperature so it's burning off any water that you might get in like on a city driven car you might get some water contamination from a lot of short trips and finally on the bottom tbn total base number of additives basically the acidity of the oil it started off at 6.7 and only dropped to 4.3 so the oil did not become very acidic and looking at the totality of this test when you look at the uh, tbn number the viscosity the a uh, relatively low deterioration of most of the ad pack, the additives package. Uh, there is probably zero uh, sludge buildup in this engine because the additives are still in good shape. The oil is not becoming acidic. The viscosity is a little bit lower than higher. Typically, if you're going to get sludge buildup in an engine, the viscosity number is going to start to go up because you're getting carbon and soot in the oil versus if it's going down, it's mainly going to be from fuel con uh, dilution contamination. So 
The oil held up very well, surprisingly well. I can't believe how little some of this deteriorated after 10,000 miles. Now, I do get a lot of really good heat cycles on it, but overall, this is very good. So, uh, the comments from Blackstone, uh, the report for the unused Kirkland Zero W20, the analysis showed they didn't detect many elements other than the ad pack. And the only element that they obviously showed, which I discussed, was one part per million of aluminum. Uh, no water and solubles detected. The flash point was really good. The viscosity was right in range for zero W20 oil. The TBN number was strong at 6.7. And the oil would work very well for what I'm using it for. I explained to them that I'm using this as a highway car for 10,000 mile oil changes. And they look forward to seeing five and 10,000 mile uh, results on this oil. Now, the current test that I'm doing I wanted to get the most accurate picture possible of what this oil looks like when it's deteriorating because the test I just did, it's pretty accurate, but it is possible to get production variances from oil, when they're, whether it's in the batches or they change it. It's normal, even in the same batch, you might get slightly different numbers, maybe a little bit more or less additives here and there, maybe a little bit more contaminants in it. It's usually going to be a very small amount, but it is possible to get a little bit of production variances there. And then, also, they could change the formula. They could change the additives package. They could tweak the base stock of the oil. It can be different. So realistically, the most accurate way is to do all the test samples from the same vat of earth, basically the same container of oil. So I'm doing the zero test, which is obviously we just went over. I'm going to do another test at 5,000 miles and another test at 10,000 miles to get a very accurate window of what the deterioration of the oil looks like from zero to 10,000 miles. Does it deteriorate more from zero to five and less from five to 10? Does it happen vice versa? Does it deteriorate an even amount from zero to 10,000 miles? That's the question that I want answered because I get a lot of comments of everybody telling me you should stop at 5,000 miles, but the results keep coming back that the oil is fine at 10,000. So does it really deteriorate that much from 5,000 to 10,000 miles? That's the question I want to answer. How I'm doing this test to keep this as accurate as possible, as I stated, I wanted all three results from the same five quart jug. This is on my 2015 Toyota Corolla, if you've been watching these videos for a while. That car takes four and a half quarts of oil. This comes in a five quart jug, so I have enough left over to add a little bit extra to the car, to pull a sample out of 5,000 miles and to send a sample in at 10,000 miles. So how I'm doing this, I did the oil change, I made sure I shook the container, even though recent testing is showing that doesn't really matter if you shake the container if the additives package falls out of suspension. Four and a half quarts in the car plus a little bit extra for the analysis. This is only about three ounces, so it's not going to throw it off because I didn't want to add any add up, any makeup oil at 5,000 miles because I would throw the results off. So. A little bit of extra oil I had after the change. Part of that went into the container for the zero mileage analysis that we just went over. At 5,000 miles, I'm going to pull a little sample out of the car and send it to Blackstone for analysis. When I do the change at 10,000 miles, I'm going to pull the final analysis out and send that to Blackstone. So all three will start from the same five quart jug to be as accurate as possible. And as I stated just now, I put a little bit extra in when I did the oil change so I don't have to add makeup oil. So it's as accurate as possible and is not biased from five to 10,000, putting a little bit of good oil in it. So that's how I'm doing the test to truly get an accurate window what the deterioration looks like from zero to 5,000 to 10,000 miles. And does it really make that big of a difference from 5,000 to 10,000 miles? That's the question I wanna answer. Now, if you really wanna learn a lot about engine oil, a lot of really good information, well beyond what I'm discussing and look at some really good results, I wanna recommend the YouTube channel the Motor Oil Geek, that is Lake Speed Junior's channel. He has access to a lot of really high-end oil testing equipment, and he's doing an absolutely fantastic job dispelling a ton of long-perpetuated oil myths that are on the internet. Things that people have been saying for a long time and that we're finding out are a lot of things are just flat out not true or heavily exaggerated. So if you really wanna learn the ins and outs of oil and what oil happens with oil as it deteriorates, a lot of the go over a lot of the myths about oil that you've probably been hearing for a long time. I recommend that channel. Uh, the Motor Oil Geek, fantastic. It's a relatively new channel, but there is a lot of fantastic information on that channel. So in a few months, 
I will get both results back from 5,000 miles and 10,000 miles. I'm currently at about 2,000 miles on the oil. And when I have all the tests, I'm gonna put them together in one video and we're going to go over exactly what the oil looks like from zero to 10,000 miles to see how the oil actually deteriorates while it's being used. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.